Hello everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. My name is Mary Stern. I'm a physiotherapist. I am also the owner of Blue Ridge Physiotherapy and Wellness. I live in North Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And this is the Sunday version of stuff I want to say. So today I want to talk about posture. Why do I love talking about posture? Well, the first thing is that I'm a physiotherapist, so it comes up a lot. And the second thing is that I feel passionate that posture has been um, there's a lot of misinformation about posture and a lot of rigid, no pun intended, thinking about posture. Uh, the third reason is that I, secret between you and me, I used to be a hunchback. Um, don't mean to take any terms lately, but I literally, as a basketball player, as a teen, as an early 20s something, I sat like this. Now, why 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 is it so difficult to change posture clearly i did it i'm a lot older now um it has been a journey i have a lot of insight i have a lot of science-backed insight but i also have a lot of that experiential psychosocial kind of what how do we unwind these patterns of tension so i'm here today to share four four reasons so four reasons why posture is so difficult to change um, and then we're going to flip that around and look at those very, those very same things, those four things in ways in which I can help you, um, you can help you change your posture. Now, it's really important to consider before we get into those four things, is posture something that we really need to change? Do we need to be posture perfect? And this is where the misinformation lies. Posture should not be rigid. Posture should not be specifically this military posture. This is actually not functional for our backs. What posture should enable is enough contraction, enough stabilization of the dynamic muscles through alignment. It is a combination of architecture. It's a combination of those bio biomechanics, those kind of ropey muscular like structures that all work together to stabilize your body and help you move in a way or have power in a way or have the ability to center and dance and spin so it should facilitate our behavior it should facilitate our comfort and that is the only reason to change posture except and unless you think it's preventative because you feel as though it's gradually going to become a problem or if, if honestly no judgment if physically you don't love the way it looks then absolutely use these principles for you However, in my practice, I am usually dealing with some tension, discomfort, weakness. All right, so back to those four things. Thank you for staying up to this point if you've stayed. Um, so what are the things that really prevent us from improving our posture? And one of those things is emotional awareness. So a lot of the patterns of tension, the patterns of holding in through our shoulders, in through our neck, come from whatever we're experiencing emotionally. So those stress patterns that can happen with or without our awareness. And so part of the practice of improving this is going to be scanning your body, understanding those emotions, and then kind of having that opportunity to say, hey, I'm gonna choose something different here. So if you're someone that kind of comes here in that stress and talk to that one person that kind of makes you feel all tight in through the neck, well, that's a wonderful part of awareness. And this is also why I love doing this work because we don't just change our bodies, we change our lives. Um, the second reason that it can be really difficult to change your posture is that our environment and our lifestyle, so whether that is work, whether that is play, doesn't always facilitate it. So what are your ergonomics like? And I won't get into it in this particular video, but I will likely do um, a physio from the physio lab uh, workshop on some cer certain postural things. So does your environment, whether that's ergonomics, whether that's the amount of work that you have to do, maybe you're crawling into tiny spaces, maybe you're lifting in a way that's not actually healthy for you from a biomechanical perspective. All of the things that you do throughout the day, is it feasible to really make a change? Uh, do we have enough of those moments to breathe, to scan, and to change? And so that's really important to know that your lifestyle is gonna correct it if it's something you're gonna to endeavor to do. The third thing that's really important is education. So having some guidance, having that understanding of what does alignment really look like? So just that little piece that I told you there, a lot of people will come into my clinic and a lot of people will do 
this kind of thing. So if I say, you know what, show me, show me what it looks like for you. So say they say, this is how I sit normally. And if I say, show me how it looks for you if you have good posture. More often than not, what I see is this. Now what's happened here? Have we created more ease of movement and feeling of comfort in the body? Actually, no, we've probably increased the rigidity, the discomfort in the lower back. So we've just brought the rib cage forward. So when we're working together in my clinic on posture, we're actually trying to find the muscles of stability here and train the core and the rib cage to stay in alignment with the pelvis. Now this sometimes blows people's minds because I mean, it didn't seem so complicated before, but this piece of alignment changes the tension relationship of muscles, allows us to engage in a way that is automatic. So we're not having to squeeze and control and brace. We're actually aligning things. So you know what? That actually feels better. So alignment, I love it as a metaphor because you find it in life when you're with people that you align with, things just kind of flow. And likewise with our, the bony structure of our bodies. So the last thing that can be a barrier. Now we have talked about environment. We've talked about emotions. We've talked about education. The last thing is very personal and it is well. So when um, I have someone in clinic, we decide that we're working together to release, for example, some discomfort that they're having either maybe here in their upper traps or maybe in that junction where that mid back meets the low back and it's, you know, at a point where it's really affecting them, then uh, we'll make some changes. Part of what we'll do in the clinic is manual therapy. I'll do sometimes dry needling, which can be a really effective way to open things up. I'll give them some homework. So maybe we're doing a little bit of opening of the muscles through here and also strengthening through the back of the muscles. Now, if people come back and life is such that I can't do those exercises every day, I can't really make this happen yet. That's just an important piece of information for you to know. Um, or, you know what, this just doesn't feel natural. Life is too stressful now. Just changed my job. I can't make this a priority right now. That is fair. And it is something that you need to know because I don't want you to feel like you're failing in trying to transform what is this sort of brain mapping of how the body should sit and live, which is absolutely changeable if it's not functioning for you. So that last and fourth component is well. So we've kind of all already talked about how those things that detract from your ability to improve your posture are also your facilitators. So if you have well, if you have emotional awareness, environmental support, and education from the right guide, you absolutely can change the way you live in your body, move in your body with greater ease. I absolutely have. I had the benefit of working through the system of yoga. And so sometimes I use that in my practice, especially if someone's familiar with it. I have more recently incorporated clinical Pilates into my practice, which is a wonderful way to find alignment and then full body movement helps us to find that stability. Sometimes we're on a moving carriage and so it keeps us honest on what our weaknesses are. Love using that as a movement therapy. And then the dry needling to release some of those parts of your body that are holding on that are not letting the other muscles kind of um, take control or just add to that stability piece. So working with those things, um, we can absolutely help decrease discomfort, transform the way you live in your body. I have people who are like, oh, this dowager hump, I hate the way it looks. Can we get rid of it? Depending at what stage you are, just so you know, that dowager hump is kind of where the, the neck reaches the, the mid back and that T spine. There can be a bit of a kind of a fat that it develops as a protection mechanism around that area. And then you look like you're kind of forward. So absolutely, we can elongate the skeleton. We can find a better way to mobilize and move in through your neck. We're not going to work towards a perfect body type or work towards a perfect posture. And I, that's something that I always want people to know. It is going to be finding more mobility, finding more strength and more function in your body. And yes, the byproduct is you look beautiful, you look wonderful, and you look 
you know, and can move in any younger way. But we can't start with that because it is then difficult to uh, really focus on those things that, that really matter. All right, I hope this has been helpful. Please like and subscribe so we can continue to connect and look out in the Physio Lab playlist at some point this month, I will talk a little bit more about posture. We'll get into the biomechanics and stability mechanics and all the nerdy stuff that I know and I hope you'll love. And please feel free to comment and ask any questions. And thank you for watching.